let's go to the Ravens at the Chargers. Chargers underdogs by three and a half at home. Total is four. Let me, let me double check that. Had 44 written down. Yeah, that went up since oh. we made this outline. Yeah, so that's 47. Yeah, so the. Holy shit. <laughs> the, yeah, the Ravens. I mean, it's the Chargers defense. Come on. Uh, yeah. It, the Ravens are favored by three and a half. The total is 47. Uh, luck wow. rankings. We got the Ravens uh, as the. They're 24, so they've been relatively unlucky. Chargers are middle. Of the pack, uh, who do you like in the captain spot? Uh, I, I got to go with Keenan Allen here, uh, just because he's he's essentially the Chargers' passing offense right now. Um, and despite having a really rough game for Keenan Allen, I mean he he dropped a wide open touchdown, wide open. Uh, I, I think the sun was in his eyes. But despite the rough game, he still went for ten catches, one hundred and sixteen yards. And a touchdown. I mean, Justin Herbert's having to throw to uh, Dal Param, who I like, and Stone Smart. Um, and Quentin Johnson, again, just he's not ready uh, to be the number two receiver. So it's just, it's just leading more to more targets to Keenan Allen. I didn't even know if it was possible. But um, he just has such a high floor ceiling combo right now that uh, I, I got to use him in the captain slot here, despite the tough matchup, obviously. I mean, it actually is better when they have a tough matchup because that's when Keaton Allen needs to catch 15 for 180. <laughs> and he'll still do of, it. Instead of like nine for 96, yeah. you know? <laughs> and uh, it, do, it doesn't matter who's covering him. He gets wide open, or not wide open, but he gets separation and open no matter what. So that's kind of why he gets a ton of targets. But uh, it, it is a tough matchup. But yeah, like you said, he, he's still going to get a ton of targets either way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Captain for me, it, it's between Gus and Lamar, uh, I think, because, mm-hmm. you know, Gus has been kind of stealing all the touchdowns from Lamar, but I'll go with Lamar here because this Charger pass defense giving up the most passing yards per game to opposing uh, quarterbacks, whereas the Charger run defense has been fairly solid. I know we're used to it being terrible, but they're allowing just four yards a carry. Uh, this year uh, they are giving up some volume but uh, I think at some point Gus Edwards is going to stop having multi multi touchdown games and this could be the game and I, I think Lamar you know he's he could run they're the fifth most man heavy defense are the Chargers so usually have some opportunities to run uh, when you're facing a lot of man coverage and I also like the fact that you know without Mark Andrews here it's a little more spread out in terms of the different receivers he could target. So you know, if Lamar, it's kind of like I, I, t- I think it was Dobbs I had in the captain spot again in that Minnesota game where it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, if he runs in a touchdown, it's actually perfect. Same thing with Lamar here. If he runs in a touchdown, you know, you might he might be the highest scoring player, and then you could still stack him, but it's just do it in reverse with you know a bunch of guys not yeah. in the captain spot, um, and you could still make the salaries work, especially without Andrews now, who is o- always going to be the second most expensive Ravens. So like Lamar in a captain spot, the Chargers have already allowed five games of 322 or more passing yards and multiple passing touchdowns. And on top of that, they're tied for the most rushing touchdowns allowed to quarterbacks with four. So uh, this is just a, a great matchup for Lamar, which means Gus Edwards will have seven touchdowns, but <laughs> on the off chance that he doesn't uh, love the matchup for Lamar, who's, who is playing, I think, you know, in this monk and offense, you know, playing quarterback more than he ever has in that, in that Roman offense. So uh, this could be another big blow up spot for, for him. Uh, who do you like for value? I, I like Isaiah likely here um, because, you know, he's, he's going to have to step up as the, the Mark Andrews uh, replacement. And he's been treated essentially as the, the one for one replacement in the past. And last week after Andrews went down, um, obviously he's not as good as Mark Andrews, but he's still one of the best backup tight ends in the league. Um, and the three games last year were likely uh, had to, you know, replace Andrews. He posted um, some massive lines. He had a six catch game for 77 yards and a touchdown, uh, one catch for a 24 yard touchdown and an eight catch game for 103 yards uh, towards the end of the season. So uh, I like using him and he's a sneaky play in the captain slot. Um, he's one of those guys that has like a really massive ceiling. Uh, so I like using him in the captain slot in some spots as well. Yeah, especially if like you know, because if using the Raven receivers in a captain spot, that that actually is, I think, 
it makes sense if you, you you obviously fade Lamar in the captain spot. Maybe you fade Lamar and you play like, okay, Gus Edwards gets one touchdown. A receiver still goes off, but only one receiver goes off. So, yeah. you know, it's it, that's the kind of, I think, script that would uh, make sense there. But, yeah, like we should run around about 85 90% of the time now with Andrews yep. out of the picture. Uh I like I like Odell Beckham here. I think I think he's interesting because I think likely just because he's like the shiny new toy will get like the most roster ship probably of, of all these receivers. And Beckham, I mean Beckham's obviously gonna you know, all these receivers are gonna uh get ownership, but Beckham, I think, you know, he's been up and down. He had the 116 yards last game, but the charges, if they continue playing man coverage at a high rate, Beckham's averaging two point eight yards a route against man coverage and uh, over the last three games he's averaging 71 yards he's scored in two uh, two out of three so uh he has he's starting to be used a little bit more like the old uh Odell and we know Lamar has the arm talent to hit him down the field just like uh Matthew Stafford did but he wasn't really being used on a lot of the deep routes with Stafford he was mostly underneath stuff so now he's starting to be used a little more down the field especially against man coverage so uh, like the upside with uh with OBJ uh, where are we going for dart throws? Yeah, so for dart throws, I, I think if if Jalen Guyton does return from his growing injury, uh, I would go with him because he's he's been operating essentially as the number two receiver for the Chargers. Again, Quentin Johnson has a lot of talent, but I, I don't think he's ready to be the number two uh, receiver. Um, and if Guyton's held out again, um, I, I guess Alex Erickson, he, he's actually the guy that operated <laughs> yep. as the number two, number three receiver, which is kind of bizarre. Again, I'm not trying to predict what the coach should do. I'm trying to predict what a coach who's about to be fired has just done. And that was promote Alex Erickson and play him an 83% routes run rate, uh, only caught one ball for 12 yards, but have to assume he's going to get only better going forward as he gets more chemistry. Um, so he's a guy that we have to make sure he's actually elevated before the game. But if that happens again and Jalen Guyton's out, uh, he's certainly worth a, a dart throw. Yeah, Alex Erickson was pretty much an every snap player uh, for for the Chargers last week. That was uh, that was pretty surprising because they'd been using yeah. you know Darius Davis, Simi Fee Hoko, uh, and then just yeah they they elevated. <laughs> Uh, Erickson and not just Erickson, also Terrell, Terrell Bynum as well. So there's they got all types right. of things going on here at wide receiver. But you, the play is obviously stone smart. I mean, come oh. on. Now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, but I, he actually is a viable play, especially if Everett misses again. Yeah. Then then smart would be nearly 50%. But my actual dart throw, same guy I went with last week who got in the end zone, and that's Nelson Aguilar. Uh, this is another spot where a defense that plays a decent amount of man coverage. Aguilar second on the team in receiving yardage versus man. He's averaging 2.4 yards a route uh, versus man with an average depth of target of just over 14. That's very good. And that's compared to just 0.8 yards per route against zone. So a third of as many yards per route when he goes against zone coverage and his average depth of target drops about three yards as well. So uh, I think he can run it back after a couple quiet games and get back uh, in the end zone or, or bust a big play, but he's consistently been running a route uh, between 40 and 50% uh, of the time. So not, not bad for a guy who's pretty cheap. Yeah. He could, uh, he could get a slight uptick with Andrews out. Um, they already use 11 personnel at a pretty high rate, yeah. but they like to rotate guys. So with uh, Mark Andrews, out, Aguilar could, you know, go over like a 50% routes run rate uh, just the way they, they mix in the receivers. Yeah. Kind of like with Philly and, uh, how you saw Julio hmm. and yeah. Zacchaeus get a big bump up and they, you know, didn't really, when they were throwing, they didn't really have tight ends on the field as like totally. barely half the time. 